Imagine a predator so massive, so powerful, that it didn't just dominate the skies, it hunted on land like a lion with wings. It had the wingspan of a plane, the neck of a tank, and a skull built like a battering ram. And it lived not in some faraway lost world, but on an island in prehistoric Europe. This is the story of Hatsigopteryx, a flying reptile unlike any other. Not a bird, not a dinosaur, a monster of flesh, bone, and air. Around 66 million years ago, Earth was nearing the end of the Mesozoic era, specifically the final days of the late Cretaceous. It was a world teeming with giants. On land, enormous theropods and sauropods reigned supreme. In the oceans, monstrous mosasaurs dominated with ease. But even the skies weren't free from giants. Among the clouds soared some of the largest flying creatures the world has ever known. The Asdarkid pterosaurs. These aerial titans were easily recognized by their incredibly long necks and legs, and among them stood a true behemoth, Hatsigopteryx, a predator so massive that it may have been the largest animal to ever take flight. While most people have heard of Quetzalcoatlus, the famed pterosaur of North America named after the feathered Aztec god, few know that another giant existed alongside it and may have even surpassed it in size, the Hatsigopteryx, the mysterious and colossal pterosaur discovered in Romania. The story of Hatsigopteryx began in the 1970s when a student-led excavation team unearthed two enormous fossilized bones, a piece of skull and a humerus. At first, paleontologists believed they'd stumbled upon a new type of theropod dinosaur. But upon closer inspection, the bone structure told a different story. These remains belonged to a massive pterosaur. Despite its extraordinary size, the creature remained largely unknown for decades and it wasn't formally named until 2002. Scientists called it Hatsigopteryx thambima, meaning the monstrous winged creature of Hatsig, in reference to the prehistoric Hatsig island where it once lived. Its name wasn't an exaggeration. Estimates suggest Hatsigopteryx had a wingspan rivaling that of Quetzalcoatlus, which stretched up to 36 feet, 11 meters, comparable to the width of a small airplane. The Romanian giant may have been even larger. Its humerus was longer than that of Quetzalcoatlus, hinting at a wingspan of up to 39 feet, 12 meters possibly the widest of any flying animal that has ever lived. Yet it wasn't just the wings that were impressive. Hatsigopteryx had a stocky, muscular build. Unlike other more slender as darkids, it was powerfully built like a flying tank. Standing about 16 and a half feet, five meters tall, roughly the height of a giraffe, it was also far heavier than its flying cousins, though no exact weight has been confirmed. Its sheer mass and strength have led paleontologists to consider it not just the largest pterosaur, also the biggest terrestrial predator in Europe at the time. Why was this flying giant so much more robust than others? The answer lies in its isolated home. During the late Cretaceous, Europe wasn't a single landmass. It was an archipelago of islands. One of these was Hatsig Island, roughly the size of modern-day Ireland, and cut off from other lands by more than 190 miles, 300 kilometers, of open ocean in every direction. This extreme isolation created a unique evolutionary environment. On Hatsig Island, large carnivorous dinosaurs were notably absent, leaving an ecological vacuum at the top of the food chain. Hatsigopteryx rose to fill that role, with little competition, no serious threats, and evolved into an apex predator unlike anything else. It wasn't just big, it was built to kill. Hatsigopteryx had an enormous skull measuring over eight feet, two and a half meters long. That's one of the largest skulls ever recorded for a non-marine animal. And unlike most pterosaurs, which had delicate, lightly built heads suited for snatching small prey, Hatsigopteryx had a thick, powerful skull with large ridges where muscles once attached. This indicates that its head was not just big, but also immensely strong. Paleontologists believe that the internal bone structure of the skull was riddled with air pockets, lightweight but strong, allowing the animal to carry such a large head without compromising its ability to fly. Its neck was just as remarkable. Shorter and thicker than expected for a pterosaur of its size, it was incredibly sturdy. Studies show that its neck vertebrae were only about half as long as those in similar species, yet reinforced with ridges for muscle attachment. This design made it surprisingly resistant to stress, able to withstand forces up to 10 times its own body weight, a feature that would have been vital when swinging that massive head. In fact, some researchers refer to this anatomy as a Frankenstein neck due to its unnatural strength and bulk more like something engineered than evolved. These physical traits suggest Hatsigopteryx was not simply catching fish or small animals. It was capable of preying on much larger creatures, possibly even dinosaurs. And that brings us back to the island environment. While Hatsigopteryx grew massive, 
many other animals on Hatsik Island evolved in the opposite direction. Because of limited resources, many species became dwarfed over time, including several dinosaurs. These island dwarfs included small hadrosaurs and even miniature titanosaurs. Some of these downsized herbivores, whether juveniles or adults, may have fallen victim to Hatsigopteryx's brutal hunting style. With its enormous skull, it could have bludgeoned or stabbed prey to death in savage fashion. But its menu wasn't limited to dinosaurs. Paleontologists believe Hatsigopteryx was a terrestrial generalist, an opportunistic predator that hunted whatever it could overpower on land. While it spent much of its time on solid ground, it could still fly. Its wings were fully developed and structurally similar to those of other large pterosaurs. Despite its bulk, it hadn't lost its flight abilities. To become airborne, it likely performed a dramatic launch using all four limbs, known as a quadrupedal vault. Unlike birds that leap from two legs, pterosaurs like Hatsigopteryx may have used their powerful forelimbs to catapult themselves in the air like spring-loaded giants. Still, how could such a heavy animal take off? The answer may lie in its internal anatomy. Though its bones looked thick and massive, they were filled with air pockets, making them lighter than they seemed. The skull and wings had honeycombed, foam-like structures similar to modern styrofoam that reduced weight while maintaining strength and flexibility. This specialized bone structure likely made flight possible. Takeoff wouldn't have been graceful. Once in the air, Atsigopteryx could glide short distances with surprising agility. While older studies suggested it could fly long distances, recent research challenges that view. Its massive body would have made sustained flight difficult. Instead, it likely relied on short bursts of flight, just enough to cross the island or find new prey. Recent analysis suggests that Hatsigopteryx wasn't built for continent-spanning journeys like albatrosses. Instead, it likely flew from clearing to clearing, using its wings as tactical tools to dominate the terrain of its insular domain. This short-range flight ability would still have been a huge advantage. Hatsig Island's landscape was a patchwork of dense woodlands, tangled underbrush, winding rivers, and humid vegetation, a subtropical environment brimming with life. The island's layout made land movement difficult for many animals, but not for Hatsigopteryx, which could simply rise above it all and descend on prey wherever it chose. Among the island's many inhabitants were a variety of dwarf dinosaurs, including Madiarosaurus, Tomatosaurus, Zalmoxes, Struthiosaurus, and others, along with unidentified theropods. The island also hosted many non-dinosaur species, such as crocodilians, mammals, frogs, snakes, and even other pterosaurs. At least three other Asdarkids have been identified on the island, ranging in wingspan from 11 and a half to 16.4 feet, three and a half to five meters. Some pteranodon-like species were also present, but none rivaled Hatsigopteryx in size or power. It was without question the top predator of both land and sky. And what makes this even more remarkable is that Hatsigopteryx is Europe's only known flying super predator of this magnitude, making it not just a Romanian fossil, but a true continental icon. Hatsig Island and much of Europe at the time enjoyed a warm, tropical climate. The lush plant life and abundant resources created a rich ecosystem one that would eventually vanish. The reign of Hatsigopteryx, along with the other non-avian dinosaurs and giant pterosaurs, ended abruptly with the asteroid impact that marked the close of the Cretaceous. To this day, no complete skeleton of Hatsigopteryx has ever been found. Everything we know comes from a handful of bones, giant fragments of skull, limb, and vertebrae, leaving paleontologists with a puzzle whose full picture is still incomplete. What we have is a monster made from shadows and stone. Hatsigopteryx wasn't just big, it was built to dominate. In a world of shrinking dinosaurs and scattered islands, it rose as a beast no one could challenge. Its story is one of isolation, adaptation, and brute power. And even though its bones lie buried beneath Romanian soil, its shadow still soars across the imagination of everyone who learns its name. Because sometimes, the most terrifying creatures didn't swim in oceans or stalk the jungles, they flew above them.